Dude, I really think we could win this thing. Right? This is kind of money, man. I'm really excited about this. Whoa. Dude, we're in trouble. These are insane. No, this is insane. We made an electric motor with nothing but our hands and our minds. That's awesome. They got lasers, OK? Th that one got, like, smoke. This got, like, lasers and smoke. Like, like how? That is pretty cool. Judging will begin in five minutes. Well, see you tomorrow. This is not good for us. Wait a minute. I have an idea. Here, hold that. OK, hang on. Agent Thomas. Agent Thomas, it's Peter. Parker. Spider-Man. <clears throat> Spider-Man? Yeah, I know. Look, I'm at my school science fair. I desperately need the greatest electric motor of all time. Can you please just give me access to 2025? Kid, 2025's not a plaything. No, I know that. I know that. This is really important. <sighs> okay, fine. I'll do a swing by at your son's birthday party. Fine. Not one scratch, though. Thank you. Hey, um, can you stall for me? Stall? Just stall, Ned. I only have like three minutes of small talk, max. Oh, hurry, Peter. Hope this works. Yes! On this by yourself. Oh, yes. We're we proud you of you. <laughs> Afternoon, Mr. Leeds. Tell us about your project. Peter and I worked really hard on it. It's our brain baby. We begin in 1820 uh, when physicists. Um, hey, Ned. Phys Why don't we show them our example? Yes! So uh, our first model is our own self-built motor. Terrific. With 10 kilowatts of power. Uh, the electric motor in this car is similar to our motor, except it has a steering wheel and these really cool touchscreen screens. And there's also seat heaters. Yes, Ned. <laughs> huh. What's the range on this thing? It's far. It's wide. And wide. Mm -hmm. It's far and wide. Yeah. OK, yeah. gentlemen. Thank you. Very compelling. Second place? We had an electric sports car. Dude, first place was a potato arc reactor. Yeah, true. Hey everybody, it's Charlie. There's a whole bunch of Spider-Man stuff going on. We got a bunch of new footage. We have Kevin Feige talking about Venom crossover movies, so we'll break it all down. The footage is them just doing a funny Audi integration, just like they did the driving exam from Spider-Man Homecoming. If you remember, Spider-Man was taking his driver's test. They did it as an Audi ad because Audi pays Disney millions and millions of dollars for ad integrations, and they give them access to a bunch of Audi cars to either blow up or use in their movies or do whatever they want to with. That's why every time you see someone driving a car, during say like an Avengers movie like Iron Man when he drove the new e-tron or during Spider-Man Homecoming or now Spider-Man Far From Home everybody always drives an Audi if you're brand new to the channel be sure to subscribe to get all the Marvel videos there's going to be so much stuff happening in the next couple of weeks including that extended cut of Avengers Endgame with that new post credit scene but we're doing a giveaway for IMAX gift certificates all you have to do to enter is be a subscriber and leave an Avengers or Spider-Man comment on the video We'll talk about the footage first, then we'll talk about the Venom crossover movie. The whole premise here is that they're having a special science fair at their special magnet school. Midtown High within the Marvel Cinematic Universe is a magnet school for science and technology. So even though they only briefly addressed it during Spider-Man Homecoming, all the kids here actually had to be really smart just to get in the front door when they were refreshments. So even Ned Leeds here is supposed to be a pretty smart kid. They had that scene during Spider-Man Homecoming where he's helping Peter hack the Stark Tech suit. So he does know a couple of things, but most of the time the movies just kind of brush over this stuff the way they brush over Iron Man solving time travel. 
Like, remember during Avengers Endgame, oh, I think I solved time travel in the span of a couple of nights. And they have all those montages of Peter making different versions of his webbing. There's a little bit of that going on during the movie, too. Peter making his own new suit using Iron Man's special printer on the back of the jet, even though it gets blown up later in the film. So when we get to Spider-Man 3, he'll have to make his next suit using some other technology. But there were a lot of comments about that back during Spider-Man Homecoming. Like, how come Peter isn't making his own suit? Well, they're just kind of working up to that because he was a sophomore in high school. Now he's a junior in Spider-Man Far From Home. Then during the course of Spider-Man 3, presumably he'll be a senior getting ready to graduate or it'll be taking place around his graduation. You can see how they might tie that in with the themes of whatever the villains are doing during Spider-Man 3. Like he's graduating from lesser problems to much bigger problems. So we could talk about Spider-Man 3 stuff after Spider-Man Far From Home comes out. Little weird that they're keeping all these special shield cars stashed all over Queens. Then the big joke of them rolling up in the e-tron and still only winning second place because some kid made an arc reactor with a potato. That's a bit of a riff on the joke from Iron Man 1 where Obadiah Stane goes ham on one of his engineers because they can't figure out how to make arc reactor technology as efficiently as Iron Man did inside a cave. Honestly, it's impossible. Tony Stark was able to build this in a cave! With a box of scraps! But the big Spider-Man vs. Venom crossover movie that Kevin Feige was talking about this week, they were doing the press junkets for Spider-Man Far From Home. Of course, people were asking Kevin Feige about the future of Spider-Man. Would he ever cross over with Venom? What's going on with live-action Spider-Verse? Is that ever going to be a thing? Am I not supposed to have what I want? What I need? As per usual, Kevin Feige said a lot without really saying a whole lot, so his quote was, I think that's probably up to Sony. Sony has both those characters and has Venom in their world. I don't know what their plans are for another Venom or if they're doing that, but it seems likely at some point. So you read between the lines, there's actually a lot of good news here too that implies what the future of Spider-Man inside the MCU is as well because people are wondering if Marvel is going to re-sign their sharing arrangement with Sony because that ends with Spider-Man Far From Home. So if Sony really wanted to be dicks about it, they could take Tom Holland's Spider-Man character and not re-sign the sharing arrangement and just bring him into their Venomverse and just make as many Spider-Man movies as they want until people get tired of it. But because of what Kevin Feige says, and all these movies are pushing for sequels, Spider-Man Far From Home obviously pushing for the sequel, Spider-Man 3, it means that Venom isn't going to be in Spider-Man 3, and Venom will probably not come into the Marvel Cinematic Universe at all. Normally, you would think that that's a bummer, but the good thing about that news is it means that Sony is just going to take Tom Holland and put him in the Venomverse for whatever Venom versus Spider-Man movie that they do. Then when we get to Spider-Man 3, Spider-Man will be back in the MCU. So it'll be more like Tom Holland crossing the multiverse rather than Venom crossing the multiverse. They're making the Venom sequel right now, but that's really just Venom versus Carnage. I don't expect them to try an actual Venom versus Spider-Man movie or Venom and Spider-Man teaming up against Carnage till we get to say like Venom 3 or even further beyond that. There's gonna be Carnage. cleanest way possible to explain it is, is that you just have Spider-Man wake up one day, some rift in the multiverse, he winds up in the Venomverse. Otherwise, if you were to try to do it the Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse way, where you have an evil scientist that's trying to break into the multiverse, you have a whole crazy subplot to set up. And this isn't the cartoon universe. If you remember the 90s animated cartoon, the way that Spider-Man winds up falling into the multiverse or the Spider-Verse, as you call it, is, is that Madame Web shows up and brings him into the Spider-Verse. Are you afraid? No. You will be Spider-Man. You will be. So because we just haven't quite got there in the MCU, characters like Madame Web, they just show up out of the multiverse and say, hey, you know what? I can do all these things. I have crazy powers. I'm just going to yoink you and put you on this other planet for a brief period, just for the duration of this movie. Then I'll bring you back. It's just way too crazy to explain stuff like that. So if you remember, the whole Mysterio story during Spider-Man Far From Home is that the snaps caused rips in the space-time continuum, leaving tears in the multiverse, allowing things to spill into our universe. Regardless of what Mysterio is lying about during the movie, Sony can totally use that as a plot point for how Spider-Man accidentally winds up inside the Venomverse. The reason why I think that that would work better for a Maximum Carnage movie is just because you can do way crazier things and Sony can sort of build up to a big crossover in its universe like it could bring Morbius into that movie too if it wants, if the Morbius movie is successful next year. 
but they do their own smaller version of what you would consider Infinity War, and it just becomes this big Carnage event. Carnage, super popular character, really easy slam dunk as long as they nail the script. <laughs> Then when it's all over, you just bring Spider-Man back to the MCU and he just has another crazy field trip, quote unquote, that he can tell his friends about. You guys will never believe what just happened last summer. I got pulled into this other universe. There was a black symbiote version of me. And then after their Spider-Man Venom crossover, they have a really easy way of explaining how Venom can get the Spider-Man symbol on his chest because during the crossover, they defeat Carnage together. The symbiote and Eddie Brock are inspired by Spider-Man and they want to be like him. So that's when they make the white Spider-Man symbol on Venom's costume. You want to put Tom Holland in the symbiote? That's also the same way to do it too. You do it when he's crossed over into the Venomverse. He temporarily gets it, but then manages to get it off. It goes back to Eddie Brock by the end of the film, and then Spider-Man comes back without the symbiote. Because I don't think that they would do symbiote in the MCU if they're not going to do Venom in the MCU like Kevin Feige is implying. When they were developing Avengers Infinity War and looking at different versions of the costume to give Tom Holland Spider-Man, especially the Iron Spider, they had a couple different concepts for what that would look like. One of them was a comic book accurate Iron Spider, and that's actually in the Spider-Man Far From Home trailer when he pulls up this readout display. This is comic book accurate Iron Spider here. There was also a black variant of that. Obviously, they wound up going with the more red-blue version of the Iron Spider suit to make it look a little bit closer to his Stark Tech suit colors. I'll do a separate video about live action Spider-Verse because that's a little bit more complicated and I think it'll take a lot longer than say a Venom versus Spider-Man crossover. So it's a really easy slam dunk. It's just going to take a while to get there. So if the Venom sequel is supposed to come next October, add about two years to that for the earliest that you could possibly see a Spider-Man versus Venom crossover. So we're talking 2023. There'll be a bunch of Spider-Man stuff happening next week I'll do videos for. Leave your requests in the comments below. Obviously, there's all the Avengers Endgame re-release and the extra post credit scenes. No worries about that. I'll name a new giveaway winner when I post new Marvel. But click here for my non-spoilery Spider-Man Far From Home review. And click here to learn about that brand new Avengers Endgame post credit scene. Thank you so much for watching. Everybody stay awesome. I'll see you guys tonight.